Hey everyone, my name is Mr. Levin and this is You A Love Psychology. Today we're going to look at the topic of perception. Perception is a process of organizing and interpreting sensory information, enabling you to recognize meaningful objects and events. Essentially, this is how the brain makes sense out of the input it receives from the sensory organs. A perceptual set is what we expect to see, and influences what we do see. A perceptual set is an example of top-down processing. Take a look at this image. What do you see? What if I tell you it's an old woman? Are you able to see her? Now what if I tell you the same picture is an image of a young woman? Can you see her now? This is an example of priming the perceptual set. I was able to influence what you were seeing by telling you what to expect. We will talk a lot about how we visually perceive the world around us, so let's take a minute to examine the process the eye goes through when receiving information from the outside world. Take this example. Light from this candle passes through the cornea and the pupil, and gets focused and inverted on the lens. The light then lands on the retina, where it begins the process of transduction into neural impulses. It is then sent out through the optic nerve. When the light reaches the back of the retina, it triggers a chemical change in two types of receptor cells, rods and cones. Rods help us see in black and white, allow us to see actions in our peripheral view, and gives us the ability to see in the dark. Cones help us see sharp, colorful details in bright light. To decipher the two, think about those bright orange construction cones out on the street. Cones help you see in color. The rods and cones send messages to the ganglia and bipolar cells, and then on to the optic nerve. Once neural signals enter the optic nerve, they are sent through the thalamus to the visual cortex. The cells of the visual cortex perform a task of recognizing individual faces. This is paramount for human interaction, allowing you to recognize thousands of faces so you can keep track of people in your life or all of the characters on Game of Thrones. Winter is here. Nerd alert! One amazing aspect of human sight is the ability to see in color. Could you imagine if you weren't able to see all the vibrant colors that exist in our world? What if the world around you looked like this? Like an old black and white movie, rather than the full color HD vision like this. The young Helmholtz trichromatic theory states that you have three types of color receptor cones, red, green, and blue. All of the colors that you see are created by light waves stimulating a combination of these cones. Color blindness is caused by people missing red or green cones, which causes them to have trouble differentiating red from green, making it hard to read these numbers. If you can't see the numbers amongst all the dots, you may be slightly colorblind. Now that you have an understanding of how you see the world around you, you need to understand how you form meaningful perceptions from the sensory information. You organize it. Gestalt psychologists showed that a figure formed a whole, more than just its pieces. So when you see a bunch of figures and shapes, you know that it's more than just that. It forms something meaningful. Form perception is how we distinguish the figure from the ground. Take a look at this image. What do you see? It depends on what your brain is making the figure and what it is making the ground. If you see a bunch of arrows, your brain has made those the figure and the black portion the ground. If you see a bunch of guys walking downstairs, your brain has made the black portion the figure and the open space the ground. This is what allows you to place me in front of this background. The concept of grouping allows us to organize the figure into a meaningful form using a set of grouping rules. Take a look at this. How would you describe what you see? Some people may see six lines, while others may group based on proximity, describing it as three sets of two lines. Take a look at this set of objects. Your mind tells you to group them based on similarity. There are two sets of triangles and three sets of circles. The next example is called continuity. Your mind sees a straight line that is intersected by a curving line. And the final example of grouping is this example. We call it connectedness. There are three sets of two dots connected by a line. All of these grouping rules allow us to organize what we see into meaningful information for our brain to use. Grouping is a great example of Gestalt psychology. We group these items together to make something more than just the sum of its parts. Humans have a perceptual advantage over many other animals that allow us to perceive depth better than them. Do you know what that advantage is? If you guess that we have both eyes in front of our face, you're correct. The fact that we have binocular vision, or seeing with two eyes, helps us to perceive depth more efficiently. Images from the two eyes differ, allowing our brain to put them together into one image creating depth. Take your two index fingers and place them about a half inch apart, about five inches from your face. Your brain will put this together, and you will see what I like to call the finger sausage. Placing the eyes in the front of the head leaves humans vulnerable to prey in the wild, but our advanced brains and binocular vision allowed us to advance past other animals not needing this basic survival tactic of side-facing eyes. Besides that, could you imagine if we looked like this? 
What would our sunglasses even look like? One test of depth perception can be seen in the visual clip. In this experiment, designed by Eleanor Gibson, babies were put on a table where there's a simulated clip. The surface of the table was colored the same as the ground. They put a piece of glass on half the table. The babies would crawl up to the glass and see that there was a clip, and they would stop crawling. This proved that infants were able to perceive depth. In addition to monocular cues, we also have monocular cues. I will quickly go through six monocular cues. The first cue is interposition. With interposition, we perceive objects that block another object as closer. Relative height allows us to perceive objects higher in our field of vision as farther away. With relative motion, objects that have passed by our field of vision faster are perceived as closer. Linear perspective says that parallel lines, such as railroad tracks, appear to converge in the distance. The more the lines converge, the greater the perceived distance. Light and shadow play a role in perception as well. Nearby objects reflect more light into our eyes than that of more distant objects. Given two identical objects, the dimmer one appears to be farther away. The final cue that we will talk about is relative size. When we know there are objects of similar size, we perceive the smaller one to be farther away. All of these monocular cues give us the ability to perceive depth and interact with the world around us. One famous example of the way monocular cues can fail us is the Ames Room. If you look at this image, which person looks bigger? The person on the right looks much bigger. Why do you think that is? When the people switch sides, you can see the Ames Room in action. The way the room is constructed is meant to trick your brain into thinking that you are seeing one person that is much bigger than the other. That's it for our discussion on perception. After watching this video, hopefully you will understand visual perception, perceptual organization, monocular and binocular cues, and the visual clip. If you like this video, check out my video on learning by clicking here. Make sure to subscribe by clicking the button below so you can receive alerts about new videos when they become available. If you enjoy the channel or find my videos useful, let me know by liking the video and feel free to leave a comment below. If you'd like to learn more, you can click here for all of my introduction to psychology videos. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time on You Will Love Psychology.